Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and I'm here with my sisters, Carissa Garcia. Just trying to throw everyone off. Hey. We got... Christy Dabdu. Hello. And then we have the one and only Ashley Sanchez. Hi. Woo! <laughs> All right. So we have a fun new series coming up. We have a series on missionary work. And it's May, so kind of went with Missionary May. And we will be talking about in this episode about how you can be a missionary in your hometown. So we know a lot of times people look at mission work as something that is only done overseas, but we're explaining how you can do that here in Tucson, Arizona, if you live here or wherever you live and what that looks like. So before we get started, we're going to pray. So I will pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this podcast we get to do. I just pray right now that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit. I know us girls already had a long conversation on this and um i pray that everything you want us to say that we will say it and we'll remember what we talked about before but ultimately this is for you so even if we forget things or we we want to say something that we didn't or we said something that we didn't want to say that you will just give us wisdom mm-hmm. that you will give us words to speak and i just thank you so much that we get to Uh, share the good news even on this podcast i pray that if anyone's listening right now and they do not know you that they will come to know you through this and we just pray right now that everyone will know that wherever they are that they can share the good news the gospel uh, to their family to friends and they don't have to spend money or have a degree or anything like that to do that so we just pray that you will refresh us that you will speak in and through us. And we just, again, thank you so much for this podcast. Give us peace and clarity. And we ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Alrighty. So <clears throat> we first wanted to just say that we know that a lot of times we get into these different series and episodes and it can all just mix together. Like, uh, it's just, why are we talking about this? But we're going to make this episode hopefully a little shorter. And we're talking about this stuff because we want to give you practical things. And so we'll give you verses. We'll give you stories. There'll be lots of laughs. But ultimately, we want this podcast to be something that is not just something you hear, but then you can apply it to your life. So yeah, not just be the Bible says hearers of the word, but effectual doers. So yeah. Right. Who would like to start off by sharing maybe different ways in your life, how you've figured this out of how you don't have to just be a missionary in a different country, but you can be a missionary here in good old Tucson. Anyone? Yeah. So I guess I can start. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll start by reading a verse from Romans 10. Um, 13 through 14 and it says for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved how Mm -hmm. then can they call on the one they have not believed in and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard Mm -hmm. how can they hear without someone preaching to them Mm -hmm. and so when I um, when I read that it it just reminds me of like it's just a command for all of us as believers to be able to share the gospel. And I think I grew up in a time where, you know, going to seminary was like the greatest thing and to commit yourself truly to that. And that's a beautiful thing. But if that's not your specific calling Mm -hmm. to actually go to seminary or to be trained on how to work in other countries or learn the language, right, then what's my role? Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, I just rely on the fact that, you know what, no one's going to hear about Jesus unless I tell them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so um, how do I do that? I specifically do that by sharing specifically how the Lord has worked in my life, mm-hmm. 
my testimony, yep. things that I've experienced, things that I've been through, stories that I've gleaned from others yeah. because I because I found them impactful or powerful in my own life. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of times we have to experience things to have a a story in order to share. Mm -hmm. And that was something, you know, for me growing up was that, you know, we all thought like in order for you to share the gospel, you have to have this like super powerful story of what God has done in your life. And I was just like, well, uh -huh. you know, I don't really have a lot of struggles as a 10, 13, 14, 15 year old. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, am I not qualified? But it's those, it's those little things. It's those minor struggles that you do have to rely on God to help, help you with. So that's how I share yeah. the gospel. Amen. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Who wants to go next on the couch? <laughs> sure, I can go. <clears throat> so, okay, being a Christian only a year and a half, that's what I've shared the most is my testimony. Yeah. But then, okay, like now it's been you know, sometimes. So I get pushed back now from people mm -hmm. close to me that I do have relationships. And I think that's an important thing to build relationships with the people you're trying to share your testimony with. Yeah. Um, so I've learned that I do need to be prepared because um, people want to argument. So mm -hmm. um, I have had to learn um, how to answer the difficult questions. So you do need to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe scripture helps a lot. I think that is one of the things that convicted me the most um so sharing scripture is important yeah. um and just showing up showing up authentically mm -hmm. like not like saying it like very robotic but just really mm -hmm. personal like yeah like ashley said like what stories you have like things how god has showed up in mm -hmm. your own life amen mm -hmm. amen that's good i love mm -hmm. the verse uh revelation twelve eleven. it says and they overcame him mm -hmm. satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death so or us to shrink from death um is another translation and so for missionaries we always think of martyrs so people who also lay down their life for the gospel but a martyr doesn't just mean a faithful witness um just who dies but it's a faithful witness of christ until death mm -hmm. so testifying of what god said in your life like ashley and christy were saying but it's something that you're not afraid to die for it so let's just say i mean you know stories of um was it the Columbine shooting where the shooters came into the high school and they said, do you believe in God? And I mm -hmm. did this book, read this book and I did a biography on Cassie and she said yes. And then they shot her and she died, but it wasn't that she was even in the Lord for a long, that long. It was just recently she gave her life again to the Lord. And so that was just a crazy <clears throat> thing, but she was faithful testifying of God until death. So it's not like she went on the mission field or anything. It was just where she was. Wow. And so that's like a story I can think of like hometown. That's where you are mm -hmm. just being ready for if someone like we know people say a lot, like if someone put a gun to your head and said, confess or denounce Christ or die, like what would we do? And we would hope we could say like, we wouldn't deny Christ, but we need to make sure that in our secret time, in our quiet time, like Christy was saying, reading the word, making sure that we have an intimate relationship with Christ so that when we talk to family members and friends, that's not just us sharing like a script, but we actually, we know God personally. Mm -hmm. And so it just flows. Not that you can't have notes or, you know, maybe have a paper with verses on it so you can explain to them you know, the Romans road and what does it look like to be saved and all that. But ultimately it's something that should be evident because of the time alone you have with the Lord and intimacy with him. So, um, Carissa, so we're going to save you for this next one last because you have shared your testimony and explained it a little bit, but you were an international missionary. You've been a missionary in Spain and that's what you wanted to do and then you got sent basically by the lord here to tucson <laughs> and you're like why god i want to be being a missionary and doing that and he brought you here so 
if anyone understands it, it would be you right now in this season. So do you want to explain this season for you a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I do want to start out with a verse as well, because um, the Lord ministered to me a lot through this passage, but then it's also, it can go so many different ways. Um, So it's Isaiah 6 through 8, or 6, 8. Um, And we all, I think we've all heard it, obviously. But also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. Um, It's actually a really great book. I think it's called Send I You or something. Um, But yeah, that was something that I really was just kind of sitting with the Lord when of just like, what does it mean to be sent? You know, Mm -hmm. like missionary, like, yeah, sent out one. But it's like, okay, but the Lord can send you overseas uh can send you to your neighbor can send you to the store can send you to your coworker, and so i've been really just like what does that mean in the everyday life you mm-hmm. know but personally for me um even the even to talk about like being a missionary in your own backyard i feel like that's something that the lord had to recently show me just because I did have this idea of like, well, this is my plan. This is what I'm doing. Like Mm -hmm. the Lord has opened doors and I was there and, and, you know, um, and it was just like, well, okay, this is what I have to do. And the Lord was like, if you can't even be faithful here, what, yes, I've served here before in the States, but it was like preparing to go overseas. And the Lord was like, if you can't even be faithful, if I've like delayed it or closed the door here, how am I going to equip you and send you over there? And that was the challenge where it was like, you know what? I have to stop living like, oh, this is only temporary. And then I'm leaving again. Mm. And you know, and I do believe that the Lord knows my heart and knows the desires of my heart. And I really do believe that one day I will go. Mm -hmm. But for now, the Lord, um, you know, has me here. And I think that's the beauty of like the, of, of by faith and trusting the Lord of like, okay, Lord, you've spoken these things, you've confirmed them and I just have to trust you with them, you know, but Mm -hmm. just because I'm not just going to hold on to that and not be faithful here and not serve in ministries here and not share the gospel here. And so my heart has really changed Mm -hmm. in what does it mean to be the sent out one in your backyard to your family, to your friends, to your coworkers, to the person at the gas station, to the person, you know, your hairstylist. And it's like, that's Mm -hmm. being sent out, preaching Mm -hmm. the gospel, sharing my testimony and bringing it back to the Lord too, because yeah, your testimony is powerful, but I'm like, I want you to see Jesus when we walk away. And so I'm going to leave you with the word of God. I'm going to leave you with scripture. I'm going to leave you with, yes, you heard my testimony, but I need you to hear, you know, Jesus. And so Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I recently had to learn, um, what it meant to just be the sent out one, but here and to not just be like pining for, okay, I'll get there. You know, it's, it's there, but I'm only going to be here. And I think that was my mentality at, um, for a while was just like, Oh, I'm here. But like, it's, I think I said that to you too. I was like, but it's for time. It's mm-hmm. a couple of months. Cause then I'm leaving. And it, it is, it's, it's a, it brings you to a place of humility when you're like, Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm not leaving. I don't know what happened there, but you know, it's the, it's being faithful where you're mm. at and serving and not living like, oh, it's the next thing or I'm yeah. on the next thing or I'm on the next. It was just like, I need to be yeah. faithful here. And if the Lord has called me here, I need to be all in and not think 10 steps ahead. So mm. yeah, it's funny that when we were like, we were all talking about this. I was like, oh, wow. I've just been walking this out like the past year of like accepting this is where the Lord has me, you yeah. know, for however long. But this is where I'm at mm. and this is where I'm called to serve. This is my mission field that he has placed me in ministries here. There's people that he's opened the door to share the gospel. So I need to be faithful mm. and follow up with that, you know, be a good witness there and also pour into people and check in and make disciples here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I, and I honestly really <clears throat> relate to that because I thought when I came down here to Tucson that I was only coming here to go to U of A graduating and going back up to like Phoenix and I was done. Mm -hmm. And God's like, "Uh, jokes on you, Mm -hmm. Ashley, you're not done and you need to go back to church. But Mm -hmm. as you were talking, the the word that came to me was just availability Mm -hmm. and being a missionary, I think isn't again, like what you were saying, Mm -hmm. like in your experience, you are trained in this area of, Mm -hmm. of your life. And this is like your calling. But for me, I think in general, as a whole, being a missionary or, or even just calling it being a witness, Mm -hmm. right. Is being available. Yeah. 
And so one of the verses that came to me was 2 Timothy 2.21, and it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the mm-hmm. master, and prepared for every good work. Amen. And um, I think that's so powerful because one of one of my greatest prayers, at least for me, is, Lord, use me, yeah. empty me, and then mm-hmm. you know pour mm-hmm. back into me. Allow me to be a good witness to you. Help mm-hmm. me. Like help me to pour into others as you pour in to me, because I think that here in here in our American culture, I think we've gotten so used to just going to church every Sunday. Right. But and and we receive, but we don't pour out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we're content with our maybe Wednesday night, spice it up and add it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right. So we get two days a week and we're fine and we're cool with that. But but like I find that to be so unuseful Mm -hmm. and like how are like how are you going to be a vessel Mm -hmm. because vessels are to be used it's not to just sit there for decoration right Mm -hmm. or or it's like that verse where it where it says do you hide a candle under Mm -hmm. a bowl right like no like your candle has to be illuminated so so it so 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 it'll shine in the whole house and that's how i see submission mm-hmm. work right mm-hmm. like how do i be a, mi- a missionary in my own backyard mm-hmm. yep. be available which also means to be a v- 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 vessel for god's use yeah. and if that takes you to martyrdom that's mm-hmm. where where it goes but if that takes you to be a witness to your own family to mm-hmm. your neighbors or the church then that's where you're called but i also think that there is kind of like this this watering down mm-hmm. of the gospel that people don't want to be used yeah. by God. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that we talked about previously is like, how do you determine who's going to be used and who's mm-hmm. not right? Like, how do you know your calling? Like things like that. So it yeah, just kind yeah. of got us on that trajectory last time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think it's really cool to know that it is hard. I feel like it's more difficult in your hometown mm-hmm. than out. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. Whenever I've gone to camp or like done little like mission thing types, like different, like even areas. I mean, that sounds weird, but I have never gone on a technical mission trip, but we've gone like feed the homeless or something. You get mm. kind of like radical. You know what I mean? You get like mm. this boost of energy because everyone's doing it and it's all mm. around you and you're surrounded in it. But when you're, it's just you against like a family member or a friend, like I've seen... <laughs> I'm seeing Carissa confront people and say things that I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, back up. I'm here for you. I'm like speaking in tongues, like quietly and praying, like interceding. Cause I'm like, wow, she is a missionary. Isn't she like, you're not used to that radical, but like that really blessed that person. And I was like, wow, look at that. But she was using her missionary passion here that we're not used to because there's something about us here. That's like, oh, but I have to see them again. Like they're going to, oh, yeah. they know me. It's just going to ruin my reputation. What if I say one mm-hmm. thing wrong? But when you're in another country, you're saying everything wrong. Cause they don't, <laughs> you're, you're, you don't know their language. They're so, like, no, hablo yeah. inglés. <laughs> so your witness is what you're doing for them, mm-hmm. serving right. them, cleaning their wounds. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Actions. But here we're so nervous of like, what am I saying? Like, oh, what if I say the wrong thing? I don't, what if I don't know the answer? Like my dad always says, then you say, I'll get back to you on that. Let me, let me chat. Yeah. You know, it's like, you can humble yourself, mm-hmm. but I think that's why there's this like excitement to go overseas, you know, like, but like Chris was saying, she can't be stagnant. And I see that she's not, she isn't yeah. because she can't be taking a break. Like, let me raise the funds and then I'll go mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. be a witness. And the Lord's like, no, you need to continually mm-hmm. abide. You need Wherever to continually are, yeah. be that witness. And so just an yeah. encouragement for people is like, you really don't need to spend. If you don't have the money too, don't do it. I don't feel like God's calling you if you have to get into debt mm-hmm. to go mm-hmm. on a mission trip. I feel like the, the Lord's saying, because I remember in high mm-hmm. school, people would raise all this money um, and ha- would not even have a lot of money. And they'd ask their parents for all this money to go on a mission trip to like this one girl. I'm so Sorry if you're listening to this, but she went on a mission trip to Hawaii. I'm sorry, but I was like, okay, that's great. You're going to Hawaii, but you're also going to Hawaii. See the pictures. (laughs) Or like some people, they'll go on a mission trip, but it's really to 
build a house, paint Mm -hmm. a house, and then go on vacation. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the Lord knows what you're doing. If you're just doing it to take the picture with like, I've seen like they take the picture with all the like African kids surrounding them and they're like the white one, like, (laughs) <laughs> it's just it's just it's if you're doing it for that that's wrong like i pray mm-hmm. that the lord convicts you on that because yeah. it's not glamorous when it's in your hometown and like you get spit in the face my dad's gotten spit in the face by his friend um glenn who ended up committing suicide and praise the lord my dad was able to witness him till the end mm-hmm. even though he said that or spit in his face but that could literally happen to you You get spit Mm -hmm. in the face what's the worst thing that can happen we know it could be tortured for christ and die but that's what the next podcast is going to be about whoa is stories of people in other countries people like richard wormbrand and i know you're going to talk about sabina his wife but there's a movie in a book called tortured for christ Mm -hmm. But I was listening to one of the podcasts on Voice of the Martyrs, which we're actually going to interview Todd Nettleton soon. And he's the host of that. So that's really exciting. But um, they were just talking about how they're teaching their children how to suffer for Christ at a young Mm -hmm. age. Like they're bringing their children into the mission field. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about, so this is just a little plug excitement for the next episode because there are children who faithfully serve the lord and then Mm. they are martyred for the gospel but they didn't even want to like they were not ready until seconds the lord gave them the strength to endure to the end and their parents not to deny christ because they're watching their child being tortured in front of them so that's (sighs) crazy you can't even imagine that but that's happening in so many countries Mm. and we're in america so blessed Last thing I'm going to say, and then Christy, I'm sure you have something else to say. I want you to say something, but so get ready if you have something. <laughs> it's okay if you don't. But okay. I, I, I also want to say something that people bring up a lot is England. England was sending out so many missionaries, like crazy, to where if you look at England now, it's the least amount, like they have like, point zero i don't even know like no churches Mm -hmm. are there it's so dark um a lot of it has been invaded with like muslims and stuff but it's because they were sending out so many missionaries that they wouldn't have anyone ministering to england Mm -hmm. to stay there Mm -hmm. and so that's what i see for america is that yes i'm so thankful that america is the one who's sending people out but we who have not been called listen to the podcast that Chris and I did on what is your calling. If you have not been called to go overseas, don't do it. I do not Mm -hmm. care if people look better than you and they seem like, wow, they're really living for God. Just because they're going in another country doesn't mean that they're Mm -hmm. doing, they're serving God with what they're supposed to do and their calling Mm -hmm. where you need to faithfully serve. Mm -hmm. If you're a mom and you're just raising up godly children, that isn't your mission field. Mm -hmm. If you are a plumber Mm -hmm. and you work long hours, but then, you are able to not share your pump plumber's crack, but you're able to share the truth of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know why I brought that in there. We might have to take that out. But I'm just saying, whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. And so stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Amen. And so I'm like, Christy, if you don't have anything, it's okay. But um I I'm just gonna add that a good way. Or it's important that if you are sharing the gospel, like you said, like we also want to back it up with Mm -hmm. like being a servant. Exactly. And and like with action. And so there's many ways you could do that. And it's like how the Lord leads. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that like I'm an outreach coordinator for my Mm -hmm. job. And so I'm doing a resource list. And there's so many organizations and most of them are faith based that help in the communities and that's a way to show like god's love if you feel called to like volunteer like if you Mm -hmm. want to really like be out there like Mm -hmm. hands on like there are ways to do that as well amen amen well all right if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you like to listen to us wherever your podcast 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 just type in (laughs) calvary conversations you can also follow us on instagram to check out our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Check out our website and you guys can also request any um, testimonies that you want to share or any guests that you would like to have on the podcast on our website, which is in the description below. So make sure to check out next week's and stay tuned for that as we talk about 
missionaries and different stories that we like. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much and God bless.